Hello and welcome to this channel. In this episode I will cover the configuration of a layer 2 link aggregation on the Aruba OS CX based series switches. This video is part of a series of videos covering the Aruba OS CX CLI. Now in this video I'll be showing you how to configure a layer 2 link aggregation between two switches and how to set up a multi chassis link aggregation. I will be configuring the lag as an access and a trunk port. Let me first show you the diagram with the three switches. It's pretty straightforward. The two switches at the top, they have two links between each other. So Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2. So I'm going to create a link aggregation between the two switches. And in the second part, I will be configuring a multi-chassis link aggregation where switch 1 and switch 2 are the distributed switches and switch 3 is forming a distributed link aggregation to switch 1 and switch 2. So at the, at, the, at the moment the configuration of the switches are, are completely empty. <coughs> Let me just uh, show you. Show running. You can see there's nothing on there. Um, and so let me just start by configuring and setting the host name. And uh, let's do that on the other switches as well. And then for the third switch, that's switch three. Okay, so uh, let's start off with the top two switches, switch one and switch two. First step is to create a lag interface on both switches and then set the lag to bridging mode and enable the interface. So let's create a lag interface. Um, let's say lag one. And then we disable routing because it's a layer 2. So no routing. I'm going to enable the interface. And that's basically it for the lag interface. So interface lag 1. Um, so that would be no routing. No shut. Okay. And then the next step is to assign both the interfaces, uh, the, the physical interfaces, to the lag. So let's go to the interface here and assign it to the lag. No, oh, no lag one. First thing I have to do is disable routing. No shut, and then assign the lag. And let's do that on the other face as well. So no routing, no shut, lag one. And interface one slash one slash two, no routing, no shut, lag one. And obviously, I have to do that on the first switch as well. Routing, no shut, lag one. And then finally, let's configure a IP address on the interface. So let me just do IP address 10.1.1.1 slash 24 and do that on the other switch as well. Slash 24 so that we can test the connectivity. Now what we can do if we go back uh, to the uh, initial mode is what we can do is we can do a show like P interfaces and let's see what the status of the lag is. You can see that the lag is up and running here. And there's some other lag P commands that you can do. Lag P, uh, say aggregates. Right, so you can see which uh, link aggregations are configured. Um, and uh, so let me also check the other side here. Show lag P interfaces. There you go, looking good. And there's another command where you can do a show lag P configuration. So you can see the system ID, um, but I'm, I'm using a static lag P, so now 
so that means that the uh, the system ID is not used so leg P is not used here mm, okay so let me see if I can ping the other side and you can see that's working too so my link aggregation is actually working now now this is a, a static uh, leg P link aggregation um, let's enable uh, leg P and set the mode of the lag to active on both switches so let me just go to configuration mode again interface lag 1 and then lag P mode active and that's all you have to do and obviously we have to do that on the other switch as well interface lag 1 like P mode active and let's check out the like P situation again show like P interfaces and now you can see that we are using dynamic like P for the link aggregation uh, you can see all these uh, state abbreviations here um, and then you can much match those abbreviations with the state here but it basically means that the uh, that the lag P link is in forwarding state and distributing now the next step is to see whether we can have a uh, link aggregation configured as a trunk port and assign multiple VLANs to that link aggregation this means creating some VLANs, assign IP addresses and set the, v the lag interface as trunk and assign the VLANs. Uh, you don't have to configure anything on the physical interfaces, so the lag configuration is assigned to the physical interfaces automatically. Uh, let's create some VLANs. VLAN 100, VLAN 101 and create the VLAN interfaces assign an IP address to that interface and uh, go to interface VLAN 101 101 at 101 slash 24 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the lag as a trunk board with the following command VLAN trunk allowed and I'm going to allow VLAN 1, VLAN 100, and VLAN 101. I have to do the same thing on the second switch. And do a trunk. Uh, sorry. VLAN trunk allowed and I'm gonna allow VLAN 1 100 and 101 okay now let's check the interface show like P interfaces it's looking good here and show like P aggregates it's also good here and show lag p configuration also looking good and the other thing i can do is i can do a show running config interface lag one and that shows you the uh, actually running configuration of the lag one interface and that's your configuration now let's see if we can ping the other side yeah that's working and let's try to see whether I can ping VLAN 101 and that's working too and uh, that uh, that concludes the configuration of a layer 2 link aggregation between two switches now let's configure a multi chassis link aggregation the first thing we have to do is we have to configure the aggregated link between switch 1 and switch 2 as inter-switch link uh, because that's going to be your uh, distributed link uh, for the uh, multi-chassis link aggregation. Uh, let's do that. Interface lag 1 and then the command that I have to issue is mclag inter-switch link and then of course 
I have to do that on the other lag as well. MC lag, enter switch link. Okay. And then the next thing is, uh, obviously I have to create a link aggregation between um, the switch one and switch three and one uh, for switch two and switch three. Um, what I have to do is when I create the lag, so interface lag two, for example, I have to specify that this is a multi-chassis link aggregation and I have to do that on uh, switch one and switch two. Okay, so that's multi-chassis. Uh, no routing. So pretty similar configuration as the uh, as the other link aggregation. Just do no shutdown. Um, let's do a lag P mode active. So I'm setting that, and I'm setting the link aggregation as trunk port, allowing the VLANs. Okay, and let's do that on this one as well. Interface lag two, and again it has to be a multi chassis. Um, okay, so no routing, no shut, lag P mode active, and I am allowing the VLANs. And then finally what I have to do is I have to go to the interface downstream to go connecting to switch 3. No routing, no shut and lag 2. And same here. No routing, no shut and lag 2. And then on the bottom switch um, we have to configure the um, link aggregation. So that will be uh, an ordinary link aggregation. So first thing we're going to do is create the VLANs and let's also assign the, v the IP addresses 3, 24, And then finally, VLAN 101. And then create the lag interface. This doesn't have to be specified as multi chassis because this is a single switch we're using here. No routing, no shut, and set the lag P mode to active. And allow the VLANs okay and then what we have to do is assign the lag to the physical interfaces so no routing no shut lag one no routing no shut lag one Okay, now let's uh, check out the LAC-P interfaces again. Uh, okay, let's do show LAC-P interface. And you can see I have a couple of lags here. You can see that my multi chassis lag is up uh, on uh, interface 113. So that's the one going to switch 3. And I have lag 1 configured. Uh, between switch 1 and 2. So that's looking good. And now what we also can do is we can uh, show some MC lag information. So what I can do here is show MC lag brief. You can see that's your that's your configuration. And I can do a show MC lag status which gives you the status of the multi-chassis link aggregation.
Another uh, nice command that you can do is um, show mclag config consistency. And that shows you um, whether your mclag is actually consistent. So whether your configuration of your mclag is actually consistent with the configuration, the mclag configuration of the other switch. So what you can see is that my ISL VLAN list is 10101. And on the peer, it is actually the same VLAN, so it's it's pretty consistent. And the other thing is, um, let me just issue the command again. Um, you can uh, check the uh, other stuff here as well, like software version, hello intervals and everything. And you can see that it is consistent with the peer. Okay, so now let's check out the link aggregation on switch 3. So do a show leg p interfaces. Uh, just let me do that again because it doesn't show really well on the screen. Okay, um, you can see here that this is up and running as well. And now for a final check, let's see if we can reach from, from switch 1, if we can reach both switches, switch one and switch two. So let me issue a ping. Yes, so that's uh, going to switch one. And let me see if I can reach the other one as well. So that's switch two. And let's check out VLAN 100. It's working too. Just ignore the duplicate. Um, that two and VLAN 101 and the other switch now that's it's all working so that's looking great now this concludes the uh, this episode of configuring the Aruba OS CX uh, via CLI be on the watch for more videos and as always if you like the video click on the like button and feedback and suggestions are always welcome Bye for now.